<laughs> they're a tough one. <laughs> LSU. They're playing tough, Rock. 48-18. They're yeah. playing tough. They played a good first quarter. <laughs> They were down seventeen nothing. Jane Daniels first quarter. got yeah. after him. You first, know, first five minutes they were down twenty to seven and a half. Manuch, what, what game were you watching? Yeah, Just really. how tough they looked at half. I mean, the warm ups they looked tough, man. They were all running around here and there. Former uh, Tiger in Arizona Cardinal, Baltimore Raven. Frank Sanders joins us now on Fox Sports Nine Ten. How you doing, there, buddy? What's going on? Hey, brother, I'm doing pretty good. I'll uh, I'll accept that roast session real fast. I just gave me. You know where I want to roast you? Next Wednesday, Putting World, listener appreciation with Frank Sanders. 36 holes, putter, but you're going to be on that clock so because you, you, you take a little while to putt. So, <laughs> Just putt the damn between ball, five Frank. And seven, you be my guest, and you can hang out with all the other listeners next Wednesday from 5 to 7. I'm putting it on your schedule. And Minuch and Jimmy B, too. Yeah, we're all going to be there, even Jack's. It's already on my schedule, brother. I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, Tell me whatever the best set that I can. I know. Yeah. Well, well, we're yeah. Bowling I, I look forward to it. Could I? Can I start promoting that you're going to be there? Because I know everybody in, in, in my birthday would love to see you again. <laughs> they, they, you, everybody, you were like the star. I mean, your sharpie ran out. I mean, you were so, you were so popular. <laughs> This, this time, bring three shoppers, and then I, but I'm, <laughs> definitely, I will definitely be there. You, you, want awesome, to bring, you want to bring you my putter, too? I'll let you use my putter if you want, if you need a good, you know, Scotty Cameron. It will help you out. Uh, I didn't do anything for you, so why would it do anything for me? <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Frank. Wow. Good shot, Frank. Excellent. All right, you know, Frank, we we, we got to talk Cardinal football with you. You know that. We so, have to. Uh, so we were, we were talking about. The fact that there are a lot of headlines that this was considered an embarrassing loss. And I, I argue that that's the poor choice of words. This is kind of an expected loss. But um, when you look at this team, where are you seeing progress? I'm the kicker. Matt Prater's <laughs> always kicker. been good. Yeah. We have Come to go, go no, to no, no, Matt, no, no. Matt, no, no. Matt, I think Matt was, Matt was 100% the other day. And I was surprised at that. But just, uh, that's um honestly man, this team has what I see differently from last year is that they do come out seeming very organized. They do they come out with a with a lot of energy and ready to play. Um I do think that this is a team that's been put together um this off season and I think you're absolutely right. What we expect is what we're getting. Uh there was a lot of there was a lot of uh in, in the wins and loss column, but I do say that I do see that the guys come out with effort and energy. Um, unfortunately, right now, they just don't have enough players to go out and actually, actually walk away with W's at the end of the game. Yeah, I think that's it, Frank. They just don't have the talent, right? They just have the talent. Yeah. But I will say this. These coaches have put them in, uh, given them opportunities. It's just lack of execution at times. I mean, that, that deep ball to Hollywood Brown, you got to lay that ball a little deeper out there. Um, another catch, you know, missed throw at the very end of the game to Rondell yeah. Moore coming out of the backfield. The opportunities have been there. They just haven't been executing so i give this staff credit for putting them in in position positions for them to at least be in these games no i, I agree with you man look i, I thought i told you guys earlier you know at the beginning of the season you, rocky actually i thought the record could be i told you i thought that you know they at least have 10 wins hoping that kyler will come back after you know week four week five i thought that definitely but i told you guys earlier i was i was excited about the coaching staff and i, yeah. I watched these guys coach the preseason they coach four quarters of football. They got those guys energized and ready to come out and play. And then we watched them come out, you know, at the beginning of the season. And again, this is a gauntlet of the first, you know, first 10 weeks of the season when you look at the teams that they're playing. They're not playing the Jacksonville's and Tampa Bay's and New Orleans Saints yeah. of, of the league. They're playing the top tier teams. So, you know, they, they had to get themselves ready. And yet they don't have all of their, you know, they don't have their best player in their quarterback. Um, guys that, you know, that we thought would, you know, last, last for the most part the last couple of weeks. They've been dealing with a bunch of injuries, so. But I do, I do. I go back. I'll credit the coaching staff. These guys get these guys ready to play. They give them a chance to come out and make plays. Um, unfortunately, again, like you know, when you're when you're stressed to try to get a win or stressed to make plays, um, you need something to get you over the hump. And a lot of those guys that can get you over the hump, those guys are on the bench that with injuries. I'm curious to get your thoughts. It's like a Debo Samuel kind of look, if you will, kind of a copycat look coming out of the backfield and running quite a bit. Um, you like that? You like the pro is that the proper use for that young man? We'd like to see more 
lined up in the slot or outside to try to utilize him even more so with his speed? You know, I, I, I would like to see them move him in the slot and, and make him a, a, a doable, a doable, a dual threat receiver. Excuse me, I use that dual threat receiver where he's in the slot and he's and and assigning someone particular on the other side of the defense where their weaknesses are, whether that be versus a linebacker or the number five uh, cornerback, the nickel back, or the dime back coming in the game um, to to go one-on-one with those guys. I see what they're doing with him, and I think that's a better use than he was last year. But I think that's just a little bit more. We don't really pack a running game right now, so that running game with the Debo Samuels is a little bit more different. Um, and I don't think the defenses are necessarily scared of our offense because of the fact that we do have a backup quarterback who's our starting quarterback right now and Joshua Dobbs. Dobbs and I also think that, you know, they're not necessarily threatened by a running game. So they don't have to necessarily, you know, pay attention to him as they would a Debo Samuels. But I do like that they, they're, fi- they're trying to find ways to get him the ball. He has an immense amount of talent that we're trying to utilize him in situations. But again, teams are not threatened by other things on our offense. So they just kind of play him normal. And then he just gets, he gets lucky at times with 10 to 15 yards. But um, when we get out, when we get other players back, I think he'll, he'll have a bigger role down uh, down the stretch here. All right, so that's what I want to follow up on, Frank, where you talked about when you get players back, because right now they are playing pretty much with a lot of practice squad players. As a veteran in the locker room, what is it like when you look around and you see practice squad players that you have to go to battle with? If I was Charles Blocker, I'd have a lot of bleeps right now. I know that. But that's just how I feel. Uh-huh. But uh, I'm going to keep it clean. Um, you know what, man? You, you know what? You you, you just you realize that it's going to take a miracle for us to go out and do it. But if I do my job and then maybe we get lucky here, here or there with one, you know, somebody, you know, makes a fumble or somebody, you know, we, we make a big play down the field and, you know, they, they take us for granted. Maybe we can go out and make some plays. It's not the same. And I think there's, that's the excitement that, and the beauty of having 17 weeks is that you know that man. We're we're right now at one in five. Uh, we've still got a chance to you know to make to make a run here uh, in the next you know eight eight weeks or excuse me next ten weeks of the season. So we can kind of find out what kind of football team we have truly have. And I think that if you believe that the coaches keep coming in and and pounding the fist and putting us in situations, then we'll. If we get our players back, that's the hope that we do have, Jimmy B. I'm looking at I'm looking at my roster right now, and I said, if I can get these guys back, man, there's, I mean, our coaches might be able to coach 100% differently than they're coaching right now. They don't have to use Band-Aids anymore and, you know, and, and stretch tape to try to, you know, band, you know, make us look like we're together, and then guys can just come out and be glue, man, and we can be together. And I think that's uh, that's the hope of what we have in the locker room. That's the hope that at least I would have um, looking minutes. around, realizing that, man, we don't have – I'm missing, I'm missing this guy, I'm missing that guy. Where's yeah. JC? Where's Kyler? Man, that defense are playing us like we're high schoolers or, or you know, a junior college guy. They're not really, you know, they're not respecting this motion. They're not respecting this blitz or anything like that. Man, they're, they're bringing their grandma to the game, their granddaddy to the game. The side pieces are coming to the game, sitting behind the benches, and they just, they're having a good time. That, to me, would be the difference when we get our players back. Well, when you bring Grandma Ma to the game, you know, that's going to be a long, long day there. Uh, real quick question. got about a minute here. Uh, will Kyler Murray make any difference with the status quo unless you've got all your dudes back in that huddle? Oh, he, uh, without a doubt. I mean, just, I mean, Kyler with the receivers that we have changes the narrative. Teams will have to, teams will change. They, they, have, they have to change up how they're playing us. Without a doubt, they 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 want to see what he's able to do. Of course, they're on a blitz, um, but Kyler and his presence um, will be night and day. You know, he has a rocket of an arm. He makes all the throws. Um, if his legs come back at least seventy five to fifty, you know, seventy five to eighty percent of what he was able to do before, he'd be still at a four five because he ran a four three. So that to me tells me he still would have a threat. The idea is that you know teams will have to teams will teams and the excitement of what he brings to the table offensively and defense, that might be the punch in the arm that gives us a chance, man, to, you know, play four quarters of football and walk away with some W's that, you know, that we could have had this year and we just didn't have. 
He's Frank Sanders. If you want to hang out with Frank and uh, maybe get an autograph from the three Sharpies he's going to be getting from uh, <laughs> hanging out with us at Putty World next Wednesday, just go to rockamanooch.com. It's only $9.10 to sign up. But, uh, Frank, uh, if you come, uh, I mean, uh, you're playing in my foursome. All right. That's, is that a deal? Without a doubt. How many holes are playing? 36? Yep. Can you handle 36? I can hold without a doubt. That 36. I was just trying to figure out how we was going to bet this thing out, me and you, Rock. A dollar a hole, I, I, dollar I, a cut. I, I, uh, I will go to the bank that morning, and I'm ready. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. We'll, 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 this is this is a game on. Game on there, Auburn Tiger. Game on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, tell you, I accept that with a handshake over the phone right now. You got it. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm tapping the mic right there. Yeah. All right. Buddy. I love you like a brother, <laughs> Rock, but I, my money's on Frank. All right. I'll do, hey, we'll take out. We'll get bets going, man. We'll get this thing going. All right. We'll have some fun. Frank, thanks, buddy. Have a good week. All right, brother. Love you guys. Have a good one. That's Frank That's Sanders great. joining us again. Uh, yeah, it's our listener appreciation putting world uh, event next Wednesday. Uh, again, only $9.10. Sign up. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun. It will be. It's happy hour, too, so mm -hmm. why not? Uh, coming up, we'll clean out the locker, give you the row one call that's all for the night, plus uh, tell you what's on tap for the night because there's a lot on, on TV. we got great, great news that the Coyotes finally came around and figured out 